Well, we're back. We're gonna check out a little bit different of a bike, definitely a little different for this channel, but e-bikes are all the rage and overall people are requesting this kind of video. So I'm gonna quickly make one on the Pedego Element. This is a very unique looking bike. It's very popular in the e-bike world, honestly. It's got 20 inch wheels. They're four inches wide, so they're a fat bike, essentially. Its geometry is not made for fat biking in any which way. It is just a commuter, upright, comfortable position. It looks cool though. It comes with options for fenders and racks, which we've got installed here and a 250 watt motor along with a 500 watt hour approximately battery and that is also interchangeable so you can choose that when you purchase the element what size battery you want overall it looks cool um i like this kind of style of bike you're not going to need suspension the comfort's going to come straight from the tires and that's going to make a big difference for the kind of people who are riding this a rider who is looking at the Pedego Element is definitely someone who is looking for an e-bike. They're looking for a more casual fitting one. They want something with comfort. And most importantly, they want something easy step through, easy to climb on and easy to operate. And that kind of checks all the boxes with this bike. So like I say, you get those fat bike tires with it. They're only 20 inches wide. Pedego does sell replacements. They look kind of cool in this angle with the color matched rims and that's on all their colors. You can get easy replacements. This is a USA based company. So it's super easy to get parts, replacements, maintenance, and it's easy to talk to someone who actually exists. A lot of these companies who make this style of bike, you know, are overseas, um, potentially cheaper Chinese quality. These ones, including the battery, and the motor are all Pedego designed and USA kind of owned and operated. This makes for myself a lot of confidence in it. There's just too many e-bike brands out there where they've got weird names. You can tell they're from a company who's kind of fly by night, sell a bunch of them, and then never to be seen again. This is not that. So what makes the Pedego different than other e-bikes? Mostly, it's style, obviously this is the element, so this is completely different look compared to pretty much every other e-bike I've looked at. You get a micro shift derailleur on it, a small amount of gears, but most people who are buying this are not gonna be shifting and doing trails or anything. They're gonna be pretty basic users. So the cockpit layout is pretty standard bike. Obviously you've got nice micro shift shifting. It works well, it shifts really nicely even when riding. It, so that's something reliable. Over here, what makes a big difference is this is a class two e-bike, so it actually has a throttle. This one can run straight in a throttle mode. There's just a power on button here. You can run straight throttle mode and not need to do anything else with it, or you do get a full pedal assist option. So you can choose that in the console, which is pretty basic. You have six modes, five electric assist modes, which increase throughout here, very easily operated. If it'll focus, plus and a minus, and then a mode which will turn it on and off. This one unfortunately is dead, which I did not know when I started this video. Doesn't matter, tells you speed, rough range, battery level, and then you can choose which mode you're in. So you have an off mode, so you can just ride it like a regular bicycle. One, two, three, four, five, which go all through different assist modes. And then mode six, which then is just straight throttle mode and you can just cruise along. You can also choose the throttle at any point in any other operational menu. This thing is a class two e-bike, so it still maxes out at 32K an hour. So it's fast, but it's not dangerously fast. The throttle, I will say, is um, quite powerful. It does ramp up the electric assist very quickly. I kind of wish they toned it down a little bit, but it is working quite well and I do think it is pretty smooth. It's just a powerful bike. I mean, electric motors, as with cars, all have high torque levels and when you have a throttle to it, you can just access that full power very quickly from that rear hub motor, which as you can tell, is quite beefy, quite powerful. Definitely limiting 
just to keep within the classification rules as opposed to anywhere being underpowered for that position. Battery is removable under the black plate there. So pretty easy key access. You can pop it off and, and take it into charge or you can charge it right on the bike. It is accessible through a port on the right side there as well. Being a class two e-bike, the brakes, which are disc cabled brakes, they do have sensors built into them. So they are, as soon as you touch them, the electric assist turns off. This is especially important if you're using the throttle, you wanna be able to press the brake and even if you're throttling, have the motor shut off immediately. You don't want it to continually push forward because it is powerful enough to continue and run someone over essentially. And that's kind of the danger with the throttle assist one. So you could be on a small type bicycle path with not really enough room for multiple people and be going pretty fast, faster than you normally would. So who's the element for? Honestly, someone who is gonna stick to a pretty smooth trail or path. And when I say trail, like it's a gravel packed kind of terrain. This is really an on-road bicycle with a small amount of off-roading capability. As you can tell by the steering and the head tube, you are not putting weight on that front wheel, you are in a very comfortable upright position, and that is a terrible off-roading geometry. Some people look at it and see the kind of fat tires and think, oh, I can go off-road, I can, I can hit trails with this, this is a off-road bike. I would not recommend it in any way. Honestly, this is probably the most terrifying thing to ride on trails. That position is designed 100% for comfort. The tires are simply there for comfort and a bit of traction and control with that soft feel to them. If you're looking to just rip around town, commute, just get places here and there, take some shortcuts, the element is gonna do it. It can cross all those terrains. It's just not a trail bike. You'd have to take a little more caution and that's all I'm kind of saying. Does have standard bottle holds, obviously all the mounting for the racks and stuff. These are very specific racks, so it's not like you can just buy these from anyone, obviously with a 20 inch wide fat bike, I'd recommend purchasing them directly from Pedego along with the fenders. Downside to the fenders, if you are someone looking at this bike is obviously the front fender means you cannot put them in most tray style e-bike racks like the Thule T2 XTR Pro. You would have to modify that rack it's just something for transportation sakes, you should pay attention to, that's all. Throttle wise, very fast. Assist wise, fast, relatively smooth. Definitely not as smooth as, definitely not as smooth application of the electric stuff as some of the higher end, you know, a Trek Powerfly, something with the Bosch motor or Shimano motor where you're spending double this price. But it does a very good job, it works well. And then, um, it definitely doesn't feel underpowered by any which way. Battery life should be pretty good. Obviously, range estimates drastically change depending on where you're riding. And with a 20 inch wide fat bike tire will also depend on the pressure you're running in those tires and what terrain you're on. So these ones would give a range from about 30 kilometers to you know, 80 kilometers, which is d good. I'm not, not downside that. That's pretty good. You're not getting over 100K on this, I don't think, unless you had something pretty impressive going on there. All the cable routing and all the electronics are stored in this little box at the back here, which looks nice and clean. You do have quite the amount of wires and cabling coming out the front with obviously all the safety off switches for the two brakes, all the power to the console, power to the throttle. So you do have quite the uniqueness looking of cables. They've done a good job of cleaning it up as much as they can. You can't do much better than that. Like I say, a Pedego I think will be an excellent choice for someone looking for this very particular style of bike, which lots of people are looking for this very particular style of bike. I like that it's American. It's gonna be reliable. And honestly, it's just nice that there'll be someone to call and contact. There is a lot of these style of bikes out there which are you buy from Amazon or Costco for two grand and uh, you never see anything again. It'll just go in the garbage and honestly, it'll be a biggest waste of money of your entire life. Unless you're the lucky one who gets one that lasts for longer than two years, which doesn't sound like many of them are. 
comfortable, reliable, and pretty unique, but somehow a very specific category people are looking for. All right, that's the Pedigo Element, fully loaded edition. Looks good, and when spring comes around, unfortunately, a long time away from now, we'll hopefully be able to test ride this thing on a live video. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Bye.